Hello everyone, and welcome to Manor Lords. Oh boy, I have been looking forward to this one for a very very long time. And before we jump into this one, I have a couple of disclaimers to make. First things first, I would like to thank the publisher of this game, Hooded Horse, for providing me an early look at this game. They have given me a key and I would like to thank them for it. Second, this is uh, an early access game and this, it will be early access at release on the 26th of April. And as a result, please excuse any minor glitches that you may encounter in this video and possibly in the early access version as well. Thankfully, it seems to be relatively stable. At the making of this video, I have about 10 hours in the game and I have experienced zero crashes, only minor bugs and glitches. But be aware that uh, there are some features that are incomplete, so be prepared for that. Uh, it is more feature complete than the demo we had a, a little while ago, I don't remember, exactly remember when, but we had a demo in one of the Steam, uh, what's it called? You know, that uh, early look kind of events. In that version of the game, there was no combat, only uh, an early look at the city building aspects. But now this version is a bit more feature complete. So I think we can jump into this one. We are going to go new game. And at the start, we have this screen. Here you can choose your portrait, name your main character, and we have a pretty extensive coat of arms generator you can use. You can choose the layout of your uh, coat of arms. You can uh, choose different patterns, different symbols. For me, I will just go ahead and use this one I pre-made earlier. Also, you can import uh, a custom texture if you want and you can save your current one and load it later. I am going to go with this one because, well, I love Scotland. Next, we can um, fine-tune the difficulty of the game. Right now, there is a game mode that allows you to go against kind of an off-map adversary. I think I will turn this one off right now because it kind of feels a little bit incomplete, if I'm completely honest. And I will turn off an end goal. Uh, at this moment, end goals are not really all that important. We are just going to play in an endless sandbox kind of uh, play mode. So we don't have an off-map adversary, but we will leave the raiders on. Basically, Every, yeah, Raider 3 years, 2 years, uh, basically we are going to have Raiders coming into the map every 2 years. We will also have a couple bandit camp encampments on the map. They will constantly, uh, they will not attack us, but they will constantly steal our resources. And to prevent that, we will have to go out and hunt them down. And uh, let me tell you, the map is big. And they might be at the other end of the map, so it might take a little bit of effort to actually hunt them down. The maximum amount of encampments I will set to 3, and we will start with 1 right away. We are going to have a 2 year grace period in terms of raider attacks. So we will start in spring. Our starter supply is going to be standard. Uh, we will have an initial arms delivery, so we can actually uh, set up a small militia at the start. It's basically going to be 20 spearmen. It's not much, but it will be enough to fend off the first few attacks. Maybe the first one. Residential requirements will be balanced. Approval will be medium penalty. Um, it's not going to be all that difficult to actually get things started. Now, well placement. This is a kind of a a restriction where you can actually build your housing. Um, you are well advised to have a well near your houses, so you can supply them with water as well as uh, firefighting capabilities. 
right now the only way to get fires is from the raiders but i suppose uh, i suspect that later on we will have random fires happening in towns as well i think i will set this to unrestrained so we can build anywhere we want and weather rents will be balanced and that is pretty much all there is to it right now we only have one map in the game so yeah we are ready to jump in begin and i will see you in the game I will pause this game right away because the early setup will take a bit of micromanaging. And look at the graphics. I think it's safe to say this is bar none the most beautiful medieval city building game out there right now. It is absolutely gorgeous. Anyways, the first thing we have to do is to have this uh, homeless people tent encampment and upgrade it to a worker camp. If we leave it as it is, this will count as a homeless shelter for the people and that will lower their approval. Uh, that will actually mm, slow down the time that we have until the first new settlers, uh, settlers come in. So if we upgrade this to a work a worker camp uh, we will have new tenants a bit sooner next up let's uh, secure our food supply that will be at the start uh, hunting camps and forger huts hunters can get food from these areas this is where wild animals live to rotate the buildings thankfully it's not using uh, key inputs it's mouse drag which is a much more precise method of rotating buildings i'm really not a fan of games that use uh, keyboard inputs because that will just result in doing it too much or too little and mouse is a lot more precise method of doing this there are four uh, kind of uh, access points to this building we are going to use a road to gain access to this building. Basically, in this game, you don't have to give buildings road access, but, you know, it would be better if you do. Because the road speeds up the walking speed of the people, which is a good thing. Now, foragers can get berries from these areas, and it seems this place is a rich deposit. A deposit... Um, yeah, berry deposit, basically a patch of berry bushes, and this one is considered rich, which is very, very good. It increases the amount of berries we can gather, and this is a renewable, so it is extra good. So I think we can have this one at the edge of the forest. We, do, we don't really have to go too deep. Plus it will look nicer if it's, you know, visible. And now we can actually start building the road. You will start with a straight piece and then you place down the first corner and then it will start curving like this. It's a very intuitive and very nice freeform road tool. Then we will connect up to the hunt, uh, hunter's campment and then go ahead and hook up to the main road. So far so good. That takes care of our food supply. Now let's take care of our building supplies. The first building supply we will need is wooden logs. I think we can have the wood cutters camp right here. Now by default buildings will snap to the roads but we can disable this which will give us a bit more freedom. I think we can have the entrance like this. As long as the connection point on the edge is white, that means it is connected to the road, like so. Next up we will need firewood. Uh, it will also need access to the trees, so I think we will place it on the other side of the road. No, I think we will leave that 
place more or less open. Yeah, I think we can do this. That will be fine. We later on we will be able to build a soap pit to make planks, have a forester's hut to replenish the trees, have a charcoal kiln to basically turn a single unit of firewood into two charcoal so we can extend the usefulness of our uh, heating supplies. Next up, we don't need mining at the moment. Anyways, we place down four buildings and we have five families at the moment. Up here, we have five unassigned families. I will unpause the game. Basically, uh, we will have to assign one family to one building once, once they are done. Once we do so, that family will work there. But we will have to leave one family unassigned so they can actually do the general building and holding and all that kind of stuff around the village. So that will have to... We will basically we will have to leave one family unassigned. Also, this encampment is in the middle of nowhere. So if we give this place a road access, that will speed things up, I think. We already have an ox. This little guy will help us move the logs to where they are needed. And we have the families going out, clearing the areas for the buildings and getting ready for the actual constructions. So, in this video I think I will have moments where I will switch over from this kind of view to a more cinematic camera and we are going to watch people work. So I think this is a prime opportunity to do so. And the first building is finished. Basically this is where we are going to make firewood, we assigned a family to it and they will go out into the forest, cut down some trees and turn them into firewood so people can actually go and buy it in the market and use it to heat their homes during the winter. Also it seems they have already upgraded the workers camp which is very good because they are no longer considered to be uh, homeless, so their morale will not uh, drop too far down. Anyways, we can increase the time compression a little bit, so we can actually start taking care of the other uh, jobs around the place. Also, as you can see, the building animation is very, very detailed, they are, the buildings are basically built piece by piece, which is very, very nice to see. Oh, we have finished building the workers at uh, the hunter's camp. We will give this one a worker, a worker family right away. And the logging camp is also done. We will do the same. And the only thing remaining is the forager's hut. This game is so nice. I just can't get enough of it. Anyways, during the night the people will retire to their homes. And we will have to wait until morning. The only thing I am not really a fan of. Is that if you look at the sky. You might notice that there is one pattern that is repeating all around the sky. I would prefer if it was a bit more realistic, because I'm a bit of a space nerd, and yeah, 
Maybe later on they will do it. We are pretty much ready to go and start planning out the actual village. Right now people have to live in that little camp and that is not exactly the most glamorous dwelling for them. So I think I will have a road coming out this way. And the village roads I will make a little bit more angular. So instead of doing this kind of a thing, I am just going to have the roads build piece by piece. So we are going to have a small district here, but it's a bit too big. So I think I will break it up into two smaller districts uh, like this. Yeah, this looks okay. Also, to delete the roads, you will have to uh, hold down Alt and click on the road you want to remove. There we go. This looks better. Uh, the next one we can do like so. Yes, uh, we don't want to encroach on the forest too much. If we start removing the uh, trees from this area, it will actually impact the output of this, uh, what's it called, a wild animal area. So we really don't want to do that. I think this is going to be the border of our village. There we go. And I think maybe one more. Yeah, let's build one more district. Not district, but kind of a neighborhood or block. Maybe this way will be okay. Yeah, this will do for now. So, let's start building houses. Houses are under residential. Oh, yeah, before we do so, we will need to actually place down the well. It should be more or less central to the settlement. So I think we are going to have it right here. Also, we are going to build out our marketplace right around it. The marketplace is where people can actually build their market stalls and sell their goods to the other residents. So I think we are going to have it like hmm, like this and then this will give us 25 spaces for market stalls. That is plenty enough. So maybe, yeah, let's do this. This will be just great. It goes around the well. So yeah, okay. Now we are actually ready to start placing down the houses. Uh, ooh, how can I explain this? You are basically placing down individual plots of land where people can come in and live. First, we place down an area where the plots will be located. And these are the individual plots. What we should be striving for is to give these plots a bit of a back lot. So right now we only have space for a back lot for five of these houses. These houses will not be able to have, these is the just residences, they will not be able to have a garden or a crafting space later on. Maybe if we reduce the number of houses. Okay, this is better. Okay, now to make this work, we can actually rotate where the actual entrance to the houses are. Yeah, you know what? I think we can have the entrance on this side. What if we have only have one house? Yes, perfect. So if we have the maximum amount of houses, which is two plots, two individual plots, uh, we are not going to have enough space for a back plot. But if we use this to one, we will have space and also we are going to have an extra bit of space next to the main house for a small kind of a auxiliary house basically. 
Yeah, I think this will work. This is going to be the first house. This is enough space for two families, basically. But only one of them will have uh, a back pot. That's going to be fine, I think. The next family will live here, I think. Hmm... This is not enough for a back plot, but if we rotate it... Uh, still not enough. What if... We go out a little bit more. Okay, this is enough for a back plot, but now we don't have enough space for a second house. If we do this, now this is much better. Uh, yeah, sure. So we, right now, we have enough space for four families. I think I will go ahead and do this next. Basically, I like to uh, reduce the number of plots, so we can actually have these kinds of uh, auxiliary small houses next to the main ones. This will basically increase the maximum number of families we can have. Mm, but this one is basically the same as this. Except we can have a back plot. Mm. If we rotate it... Now this is very much better. If we reduce this one... Yeah, with this one we can have five families instead of just four. Yeah, I think this is a good trade-off. Basically, these central houses will be later on upgraded to higher quality houses and they will be able to turn into kind of a specialized workshops. But we will get there when we get there. This area looks like a perfect place for more housing. Except mm, we don't really have enough room for backlots. Now we could um, remove the road and extend it, but I think this one will work as well. What we can do is have the entrance on this side. Basically, this will push the entrance to the houses back a little bit, so people can go through here. That's fine, going to be fine. And this looks like a uh, more space than we actually need for these kinds of workshops. But there is one back plot that will take advantage of this, vegetable gardens. And veg building vegetable gardens, the bigger the plots are, the better basically. So yeah, I think this will do for uh, some vegetable gardens. And we can basically do the same here, I think. Except we have no more goods available, so... We only, uh, one building one plot will take two logs, and right now we only have three, so we could only build one plot here. We can do this and reduce it like this, but mm, that doesn't really look right, I think. So, yeah. For now, we are just going to build this and let the logging camp build up our wood, uh, wood reserves. Okay, now we have all these houses finished and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plots. That is plenty enough to upgrade, uh, basically level up our small village. Uh, once, uh, ev uh, every time we level up the village, we get a kind of a progression point. Uh, let's see, we can use these points on these developments. Uh, some of these are still work in progress, so 
our options are not where they will be later on. I think the first one we should be doing is... Mm, let's see. What can we do? Orchardry maybe, so we can increase the food variety. Or have forest management so we can double the capacity of our berry deposits. Now the thing is that the berry deposit already is already rich, so I don't think this one will be necessary. Uh, enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest which give a passive income of meat. Now this one would actually be quite kind of beneficial because the area where the wild animals are is not rich. So we only have about 20 animals at uh, maximum and we uh, have the default set to leave 10 animals alive so we can have them replenish the population. So having this one on might actually be beneficial so we can have a passive income of meat. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, later on we can buy the other ones, that's going to be fine. So, let's see. Right now we have room for 20 uh, families, uh, sorry, 12. But that is because we still have this encampment. Our first five families are still living here. I think it's time we move them into the village. So we are going to demolish this encampment. We get a single piece of log back that is great and we have 20 stone left out here i think that will survive out in the rain so i will have this road removed okay next up we should build some storages right oh we already have one extra family great anyway so as i was saying we are going to have storages built we have two storages, a granary and a storehouse. The granary is of course for food. Uh, since we have our current food supply here, I think it would make sense to have it built here. So rotate it a little bit to align with the road and this will do. As for the storehouse, this is where we will well store our goods. Uh, I think somewhere in the vicinity of the market will make sense i think yeah this will do also it is close to the actual main thoroughfare so this is where traders will go about their business so it makes sense to have the storage here so we can take things to the trading uh, depot a bit faster now this one, it says we are low on food at the moment. Oh yeah, because we didn't give a family to the... What's it called? The forager's hut? But now it should be okay. What's next? Um, I suppose we can upgrade these to have these veggie gardens. This will take 15... Uh, money or gold or wealth basically we have two kinds of wealth in the game regional wealth and personal wealth uh, personal wealth is basically our personal treasury and regional wealth is the money available in this region oh yeah we might as well talk about the regions right now we are only able to build in this region later on we are going to uh, gain prestige which we can use to claim other territories and I have a feeling that later on in the full game we are going to have enemy lords who will settle in these regions and we will have to fight them for these territories but that is not in the game at the moment so we don't have to worry about that now this place to build a second house, we will have to uh, pick, uh, click this expand living space button. But I think we have enough room so we don't have to do that. Now we have a new message. Ah yes, this means that the storehouse is finished. So our 
initial arm shipment has been delivered. It is right here. We have 20 spears and 20 large shields. This is basically enough to set up a small militia at the start. Which we can do so by clicking on the army button, clicking this little plus sign, and we can choose what kind of militia we want to be, uh, train up. Right now we only have a, a 12 people enough uh, for this, so we will not be able to take advantage of every single piece of equipment. We can also hire mercenaries, but they take money, so let's not do that. Uh, yeah, as I said, we have the equipment for Spear Militia. We can set it up basically. Uh, the maximum per militia unit is 36. Basically, as we uh, gain more people, they will fill out these ranks. But since we have equipment for only 20, we are going to have 20 militia pen. Now, uh, the logging camp will actually so slowly start depleting this forest. So what we can do is to tell them, okay, you guys can only work in this area and let's make them work in this area far away from the town okay and we can actually set up a forester's hut which will help us replenish the forest let's place them ah, like here will be okay we just need to give this place a small road which we can do so like this okay the ox will take the building materials and then they will go ahead and build the forester's hut we are going to assign a family and i will also assign this one a working area should we reforest this place or just have them worry about where the loggers are active right now well, the maximum size is this. So I think I will set this to set them to work in this area. They will cover the forest, uh, the woodcutters as well. And also reforest this place. So yeah, I think we can maybe. Okay, while the uh, woodcutters are busy deforesting this place, I will have the foresters replenish this place they will basically move around this area randomly and if they find a free space they will plant a tree there we can keep track of them by selecting the people tab and we can see them walk around the place and if they find a free spot they will plant a tree there anyways um oh yeah before i forget let's give these two plots a veggie garden so this will take, as I said, 15 units of wealth. And at the moment we only have 50. So this will take 30 and only leaving us with 20. Anyways, we have two families free at the moment. Basically, we can have one family job built somewhere. Should we go for saw pit or something else? You know right now our hunters are also gathering hides they are not really usable at the moment but if we build a tanning hut we can turn these hides into leather which will basically act as a kind of a clothing item which the citizens can take advantage of i think i will build it relatively close yeah, like here will be okay, I think. Also, this is another work in progress uh, feature, smell. Right now it's not implemented, I think. Later on, I suppose tanneries will be quite stinky, so we would be better off placing these away from the center of the town. I will leave the central buildings undeveloped because they will be turned into workshops later. What about you? I suppose we give, can give this one maybe a chicken coop or a goat shed. 
because this is not a very big back plot, so it's not good for a vegetable garden, but maybe good enough for chickens. Basically, I think only vegetables get this uh, space bonus. Chickens and goats don't say that they do, so I don't think they are. Um, maybe orchards will do as well, it would make sense. But we cannot build orchards right now because we are we spent our development point on the trapping. Also, if you hover over the name of the village, you can see that uh, to get this level we had to get five uh, burgage plots. And to get the next one, we will have to upgrade two of them to level two. And to upgrade them to level two, we will have to satisfy every single piece of these options. Basically, we will have to build a church, have at least two kinds of foods available in the market, and we will have to have a clothing uh, supply. This clothing supply will basically come from the tannery, which we can assign a family to right now. Now, we are at the limit of our living spaces. So I think it's time to actually build more. This little neighborhood looks like a good place for it. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and... I think I will have the main entrances face towards the center of the village and have very big back plots, right? Like so. And if we reduce the number of plots, let's see. Yeah. Right now we have room for five families. If we reduce the number of big plots to three, this will leave enough room for six families. Yeah, this is well worth the investment. So yeah, we will build three more plots. And this is plenty of space for more vegetable gardens. Now this is, um, we can either build the houses with the entrances this way so we can have more big plots here but i think it would make more sense to okay we will rotate them i think let's see yeah this will do just fine okay so we will rotate them to face towards the village and we will reduce the number of plots so Right now we have enough for 9 burgage plots. If we do this, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, the same. If we do this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is better. Anyways, I'm just trying to min-max the number of people we can get. So this is enough for 10 families and this is only for 9. Yeah, might as well do it. Now, this is, these are small backplots, so they are perfect for small um, crafting. Yeah, this will be fine. Thank you, autosave. I think I am going to go ahead and build the last remaining burgage plots here. Now we can have either two or one for the same amount of families. I think this will look better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just go with this one. And we have winter approaching. Well, this means that we are now officially in autumn. We just need to make sure that we can survive for at least three months. We have enough fuel and food, so we are going to be just fine. Anyways, right now we are out of money. There are two sources of money in this game. We can either get some by trading or we can raid some of the bandit encampments. Right now we are not ready to do the bandits so i think we are going to go ahead and set up a small trading infrastructure 
which we can do so with the trade trading post. There we go. I will have it built uh, here will be okay, I think. Mm, somewhere out of town. Also, before we close this screen, let me take out the different overlays. So, as I said, underground water is turned off at the moment because I don't like having my uh, building location restricted. Now, we have different fertilities. Emmer is, I think, basically grain. We have some mm, relatively decent fertility up in this corner. Yeah, other regions are much better at this. This is not suitable for farming, unfortunately. Well, we can do a little bit here, but that's about it. Now for flax, oh, it's even worse. We might have to go and settle one of the other territories for flax, which is unfortunate because we will need flax for another kind of clothing item. Barley, oh, it's even worse. Barley is what we will need for making beer which is necessary for upgrading to level 3 or 4, I don't really remember. Rye. Rye is not so bad. But unfortunately, I don't think Rye is implemented at this moment, so it's kind of irrelevant. So, yeah. We can have some wheat farming up here and some very, very inefficient flax farming wherever we want. Anyways, let's speed up the construction of the trading post. Um, we can also set up a small... Where is it? It's under forestry. We can actually start uh, setting up the soap pit at this moment, uh, at this time, I think. Yeah, sure. We can put it... Um, here will be okay, I think. Now, by default, the, entrance, the default entrance to the soap pit is like this, but I think it would actually make more sense to have it like this, so that the little ramps leading into the soap pit, where the wo actual wood logs are unloaded, will face towards the road. So I think it makes more sense to have it like this. And we have the first snowfall. Very, very nice. Basically, we are going to have snow until late February. And in terms of time progression, basically one month is one day in the game. Now we have enough room for 15 families plus 2, that plus 2 is the number of um, houses under construction. And I would really like to get rid of the bandits because they are stealing our resources. Okay, now we are up from 16 to 18 people. This will increase as new families keep moving in. We have room for 7 more families at the moment. Once the next house is finished, we are going to have even more room. Uh, is this done yet? Not quite. I think I will set this to high priority so it's, it gets done sooner. Basically, by default, uh, things get built as they are placed down. We place down these houses before the, the trading post, so they got built first. Anyways, we only have enough money for one more vegetable garden. Mm, since it's winter, I see no point actually building it, so yeah, we can leave it for later. Anyways, people keep moving in, and now we have enough people to take up all the arms we have. That's great. We can... oh, it's not done yet. 
if we uh, by the way if we hold down tab we can see where we can assign people we can assign one family to the different storages for example so they will go around and gather the resources instead of having the the production producing families move it to the storages so they can actually work more on gathering instead of moving things uh, stuff around should i give the hunters one more family with the passive income that might not be a bad idea in the meantime I, we can set up some trades so let's see we have no stone extraction going at the moment but once that soap it is done we will have some planks i will set this one to exporting and i think i will have a surplus of Mm, 50 i think that will be fine and now we have the families settled in so we can give this one family to work and we can keep on setting up the trades crops we have none at the moment so we are not going to bother with that and meat yes might as well set up a trade for it for export and i will leave an, a surplus of 50 for berries, I will leave a surplus of, let's say, a hundred. And right now, the only other stuff we can grow is vegetables. I will set this one to 50 as well. And bandits are pain in the back. Now, no flour, no wooden parts, no linen. At the moment, we have firewood we can sell the firewood we don't need i think i will have it at 100 as a surplus to keep around yes anything else now this is something that is not implemented in this version that i'm using at the moment it might be in the early access version i am not 100 sure please don't quote me on that but at this mo very moment in time it's not implemented yet at least i didn't see any uh, way to actually do this but the thing is that some resources will require a setup of a trade route and uh, i think it's actually not implemented because um, let me sh see yeah trade point it says it's work in progress so i think it's not implemented yet Anyways, one of these resources is leather, so we cannot actually sell the leather, unfortunately. And this same goes for these commodities and the military equipment. These we will have to make ourselves, unfortunately. We cannot even buy them, let alone sell them. Anyways, yeah, so... I think this is all we can do at the moment. As soon as we have some surplus, we will start selling them. Yeah, this will be fine. Let's speed up time again. Now, the soap pit is done. We have no other construction going on at the moment, so I think I will have that last remaining family assigned. And we are going to just wait for a new family to move in before we progress to the other stuff. Now we have a new message. We have received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Absolutely. This is basically the raiders that we have set up at the start. The raiders will attack us in one year. Well, that should be enough uh, wiggle room for us to set up a small arms industry. So, that will require extra families. We have enough room for six more families. That should be enough, I think. And one of them is already moving in. So, anyways, to get what we need, we will need to set up an iron mine. Let's see, how big is this one? 167, that is a lot. 
it's not a rich deposit, but this will be enough for a little while. So this is a mine, which we will, of course, hook up to the roads. Let's make it a little bit more interesting looking like so. Okay. Now, iron ore all by itself is not usable. To make it usable, we will have to go into the industry tab and build a bloomery. Basically, this is where the iron ore gets processed. I think we can have it right here. This will be fine. Now, we can actually use uh, iron to make some tools. But as you can see, there is no weapons or shields, workshops or anything like that. Why is that? That is because the more intricate kinds of uh, goods are made in here, in the actual burgage plots. Right now these are level 1s, so we can actually only give them a vegetable garden, chickens, goat sheds or an apple orchard once we have the thing unlocked. To get these, which are the actual workshops, we will have to upgrade these places. And to do so, we will need to satisfy these uh, requirements. And it seems the only thing left is a church. So if you don't mind, I am going to go and see if we can do so. No, not yet. We still need some extra planks. Five more to be exact. So I think we can wait. Construction finish bloomery. Great. Uh, I think I will start extracting the iron right away. Well, as soon as this one is finished. And the bandits are still a pain in the neck. How are we doing on food? Hmm. We don't really have any meat, unfortunately. Yeah, we are only really selling the berries and the vegetables. Oh well. I guess it will get better later on. Now, let's see. Now we have 30 planks, so we can actually start and build a church. This is just going to be a small wooden church, nothing fancy. I think I will build it somewhere on high ground. Well, this is not really a hilly area, so I think I will have it built here. This one is still relatively close to the center of the town. Yeah, something like this will be fine, I think. Sure. Move it up to the road. With a small bend so it looks a bit more interesting. There we go. And we have 300 days left until the raiders attack. Now let's see, let's hold alt. Yeah, we can assign someone to the bloomery. But first, let's make sure we actually have some iron coming in. Perfect, and people keep moving in, that is awesome. So, now that we have some iron being extracted, we can get this bloomery started as well. And we still have one family which I think we will assign to this church. Now this one will take a little bit of time. Also, this used up the last remaining uh, stone supply. So I think we might as well set up a small... Uh, let's see, where is it? It's in mining. Stonecutter's camp. And would you look at that? Our stone deposit is rich. That's great. So I think we can have it Yeah, on this little corner will do. If you hover over the actual deposit, it will highlight in red. So let's not destroy any of the deposit. There we go. This will do just fine. 
we can have the road meander around the place. Yeah, this will do. Should we do some clay? Mm, no, this will this can wait. And we still have some room. Now we have a choice to make. We can either build more Burgage plots or expand the ones we already have. If you remember, we can build some uh, auxiliary smaller houses in some of the plots. So I think that will be what we are going to do for now. And these are too small, except these two. That's great. Yeah, this one is too small for an extra house. These are not too small. That's great. Yeah, this will do. And right now we have enough uh, money to actually set up more vegetable gardens. So I think it would be best if we did so. Because that will increase our food production. Uh, veggie garden. Perfect. It will take a bit of time to actually till the soil and get things growing. But once we do, it is a pretty good food source. I like to have these vegetable gardens basically extend into the edge of the town so it looks a bit more realistic. Also, I don't really like having this road here. So I think I will have this one removed. Should we build more houses here? I think I will reserve this place for some industries. Yeah, let's not get too hasty. Also, these starting storages can only really store so much stuff. So I think it would make sense to actually expand them. It only takes a little bit of extra resources, so yeah, let's do it. And we can do the same for the granary as well. But that will require stone, so this will have to wait. And speaking of the stone, it is still under construction. That's fine. Now, do we have any iron ready to go? I guess we will have to wait for the storehouse to finish. Thank you, autosave. I set this one to high priority so get can get this one out of the way. I really want the church to be finished so we can actually start upgrading our houses. So we can actually start making some weapons. But for that we will need stone. Which is still under construction. Now, what we can also do is, where is the... Yeah, have this hitching post upgraded to a stable. I will do so, so we can actually have not just one ox, but two, which will speed up the moving of the logs quite a lot. So this is absolutely going to be highest priority. And it seems... Yeah, it's on the wrong side, but you know what, that's fine. So, we have one more stable space and we can order another ox. We have the money for it. Let's do it. It will take some time for the ox to arrive from off the map, but once it does, it will be very beneficial for us. And people keep moving in. That is great. And we have no more empty workspace, workspaces, so yeah, that's great. Now, do we have any meat in the granary? Nope. In the food stalls? Not really. Let's see. 
we have zero meat, unfortunately. Yeah, having a, a regular non-rich wild animal supply is not exactly the best thing ever. Oh well, not much you can do about that. Anyways, now we have some of these auxiliary houses finished, which are basically just these you know, smaller living spaces. And the church is done. We are going to give this one a family so they can start spreading the good word. And this basically enables us to, up, uh, to upgrade some of these burgage plots. Now, as I said, and only the smaller plots will be used for industry. So we will only really upgrade those because upgrading them takes some resources. So let's see, for now we will need at least two. One for the spears and another one for the shields. Technically, we could build another one for uh, the boyers to make some war bows. But I think this, this can wait. The early attacks are not that mm, hard. Anyways, we have two houses that are being upgraded. For that we will need, of course, the resources. And yeah, we have both oxes working at the moment. At this moment in time, upgrading the houses will basically just uh, upgrade their roofs to use uh, wooden tiles instead of this thatch. There we go. This is a small level 2 burgage plot, which means we can set up a small blacksmith's workshop. Absolutely, yes please. And this one will be upgraded into a joinery. Once it's finished, In the meantime, the blacksmithy is finished. To take advantage of this one, we will need to open the general tab and choose what we want it to make. Now we can either make tools, but we can make tools in a dedicated industry building. We should use this for weapons. We can either uh, have sidearms, basically swords, or spears, or pole arms. Which is basically, uh, let's see, oh okay, we can actually have axes but they are not implemented yet it seems, or we can have the spear militia or the polar militia, militia, I think maybe the archers can use the sidearms, <laughs> either way, doesn't matter, we will use this blacksmith to make some spears. And as soon as this building is upgraded, we will turn it into a joinery, which is where we can turn simple wood into uh, shields. Now for that we will need, let's see, can we please, yeah, there we go, joiner's workshop. This is where we can turn wood or planks into shields. And we are good to go. Go over to general tab. And if you remember, the spearmen use large shields. So that is what we are going to make. Great. And since we have upgraded two houses, we are now a medium village, which gives us a development point, which we can use. Let's see, advanced skinning, amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers. Mm, okay, I think I will go ahead and 
So we don't really need the forest management. Should we go for apiaries? I think we might as well do so. We don't really need plows. We can just buy sheep later on. It would might it would make actually sense to go down this route as well. So we can go into deep mining, which will turn rich deposits into infinite ones. Or we can do some basic armor making, which will allow us to actually uh, give our soldiers some protection. Mm. Let's see, orchards, apiaries, or helmets. Let's go for helmets. Which of course means we can upgrade one more Burgage plot, which we will turn into a small armor smithy. And we are now 150 days away from the attack. Let's see how our soldiers doing. Now we have two more. Great. But we will need even more than that. Right now we have 28 spears and... Okay, it keeps increasing because we are making equipment. Now, here's the thing. Since we cannot really trade... Trade away the equipment, it doesn't really make sense to overproduce them. Unfortunately, in this game we cannot tell how much we want to produce of certain items. So the only real way to limit the number of equipment we can make is to exclude them from the big storages. So that is what we are going to do. The large store, the large storehouse is not allowed to store spears or large shields. Thank you. We are only going to store these in the actual workshops, which has a limit of uh, 30. That is plenty enough. Plus, if we click on these burgage plots, you will, you will see that the soldiers are actually stealing, uh, not stealing, storing their stuff in the house. So, yeah, uh, we don't really need to worry about this. We just need to make sure that we don't over flood the market, basically. Okay, we have room for one more family. Can we... Um, yeah, I think I will go ahead and upgrade some of the remaining plots with auxiliary housing. This one is done. We have no room here. Yeah, I think we are... Uh, we can do so here as well. And I think this is pretty much the limit of our... Yeah, this is all we can build. That's fine. And if we look down here, now we are 36 out of 36. That's perfect. If we want to, we can set up a second spear militia. This will split the... Basically, uh, split them in two, which might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think we can do this. Can we upgrade anything? I think I will upgrade the foresters with a second family. So we can reforest the area a little bit better. Because, yeah, the logger, loggers and the f firewood makers are a, are a bit too effective at deforesting. Also, I think I will limit the wood, these woodcutters lodge to, to the central forest as well. So yeah, you can only really work here. So the same goes for the loggers and the foresters can reforest the area like this. 
So basically the foresters can work in a bigger area than the loggers and the woodcutters. Okay, as we keep making money, we are going to go and uh, keep upgrading these plots. Anyways, we are 75 days away from the first attack. And right now we have one, two, and three bandit camps. So we are maxed out. But this one is relatively close to the village. How about we go and do some bandit hunting? Yeah, let's do that. So we have two medium-sized regiments at the moment. I will have them rally here. There we go. We have our soldiers mustered. What we can do is to set them into a formation. Yeah, two of these uh, double line formations will be fine, I think. We can also tell them to have different stances. We can either have them basically mm, not to retreat, but take steps back, so maybe we can lure them towards the missile troops, have them take uh, cover behind their shields, have a balanced approach with, uh, with no advantages or disadvantages, have them stand ground, which give them a defense boost, or we can have them push forward with some extra attack. We can also have them run, which will tire them out increasing their fatigue and uh, decreasing their effectiveness. That is not ideal. We can have them stop where they are, or we can disband them, we basically send them back in the town and have them wait for their next call. Anyways, we have 70 days left. I think that is enough time to hunt down these bandits. Unfortunately, they are in the middle of a forest which might not be the best place for fighting, but not much we can do about it. And also, I am not going to have these troops run to their destination because that will tire them out. And as I said, that is not the best thing ever. Now, as we get close to the bandits, yeah, they will send out their troops. In my experience, it's better if we have the have our troops wait for the enemy. Basically, we have something called cohesion. Right now it's minus 10 because they are not in formation. They are all over the place. They are not in line. If we ha have them stop and move them into formation. Let's see. Let's wait for them to arrive. There we go. Once they're settled into their formations, their cohesion will increase. If we move them around, their cohesion will go away, so I think it's better if we have the enemy come to us. So we don't lose cohesion. There we go. It seems the enemy goes for this unit. Yeah, once they are attack once they are uh, in combat we will have these guys move them around and attack them from behind no yeah okay now they are in combat have these guys move behind them and charge from behind And the brigand's effectiveness is now cut in, well, in half most of the time. It seems that it is actually possible to outflank the enemy. It doesn't really work all the time, it seems, but it works enough of the time, right? Yeah, this will be fine. And the enemy is routed. So, the actual bandits are routed. They will just go out 
go run away, that's fine. But their encampment is still around. We can actually have our troops rummage through the encampment and get some extra money. Now we can have this money go towards the regional wealth or our treasury. I think at this moment I will send it to the regional wealth so we can upgrade things a little bit faster. And the bandit camp is gone. Here we can decide where we want to send the money. I will send it to the nearest town. And now we have 100 extra gold in the town. Now to prepare for the attack which is 60 days away. Since we are not going to fight anymore, I am going to have these guys run home. Which is faster, it will tire them out, but that is going to be fine. There we go, okay. Now they are back home. We are just going to go and disband them. Which will make them go back home, get back to work. And they are ready for their next call. Which will come in about 50 days. Okay, with all that excitement out of the way, it seems this burgish plot has been upgraded. So we are going to go ahead and build an armor's workshop. They are going to use um, iron from the bloomery as well, which we have in the storehouse. That is great. Now, I am going to go and exclude uh, helmets from the big storehouse as well because we don't need to make too much and we have the armory done we will need to tell it uh, we can only make the helmets anyway so that's fine so it the blacksmith will go out pick up some iron and start making helmets and the best thing is these guys will automatically go ahead and you can see on the equipment right below, we already have three made. If we call these guys out, uh, you can muster here. There we go. So these guys have a couple helmets. And if we look at them, here's one. Oh, no, wait, here they are. These guys have helmets. Basically, it actually does make a difference, both in terms of aesthetics and in terms of gameplay, how much equipment do we have. Anyways, we can disband these guys and let them get back to work. Now, we did get quite a bit of money from that little raid, so we are going to use it to upgrade the remaining vegetable plots. Uh, this one I think I will go and use for chickens and this one as well, so we can get some eggs. These are workshops. And I think until we upgrade these, we are just going to use these for chickens too. Once these are upgraded, then we can turn them into an actual workshop. There we go. And the chicken coops are done. These guys will slowly give us some uh, chicken eggs, which will be sold in the marketplace. Which will, of course, increase the food variety, which is very good for us. Now, to upgrade these to level 3, we will need one more clothing item. Clothing item. We will need to upgrade the church and we will need to have a tavern. And the church will have to be upgraded by... Yeah, we will need to make some tiles, which will require clay extraction. Also, 
I completely forgot about the stonecutter's camp. Might as well start extracting stone. And we have 960. That is a lot of stone. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is fine. Now, let's see. Um, for this kind of... For the next level of clothing supply, we will act, we cannot really re rely on raw uh, materials. So we cannot fill it with linen, leather or yarn. We will actually have to make some proper clothes. We can either make shoes, clothes or cloaks. Well, as it happens, we have leather, which is an ingredient for shoemaking. So yeah, I think we will upgrade. Let's see, these are upgraded already. I think I will upgrade this house and turn it into a cobbler's workshop. We have eight more families. Hmm, yeah. Anyways, by I completely forgot to mention, if we upgrade one of these to a workshop, oh, that's pause because the enemy is here, but let, let me finish explaining. So if we upgrade one of these to a level 2 burgish plot, that will still leave them available for assignment. But as soon as we upgrade the burgish pl uh, plot to a workshop, the main family will be completely dedicated to that workshop and they will not be assignable to other buildings. So I think the auxiliary house will still remain uh, assignable, but the main house will not be. They will be 24 seven working in the workshop. Now the attack. Enemies have been spotted right here, which is pretty close to our area. And it seems they have sent two units. Huh. Before, in my previous games, they always sent one unit. Well, it seems having a second unit was actually quite a good idea. We will definitely need to set these guys. Okay. Let's prepare. We have 25 people in each unit. I think I will have them set on a... Mm, it doesn't really matter at this point. Maybe later on it will matter, but right now the formation doesn't matter. I think I will also have them set to stand your ground stance. So their defenses are better. I will turn off running. And we are pretty much ready for the enemy. Now they will have to come through this little uh, board and come down here and climb up. Uh, I think if we have the troops move downhill, yeah, that will give them a tiny bit of extra effectiveness. So I think it would actually make sense to have the enemy come up to us instead of us going down to them. So let's say moving uphill. Does it change? Yeah, climbing will actually uh, decrease the effectiveness, so it will be better if we have the enemy come to us. If Basically, we should have the high ground. Okay, they are coming. Thankfully, these are just brigands. They are just equipped with clubs. They are not exactly the most effective fighting force in the world. Who are you going for? I think they are going for this guy. Which means we can have these come out behind and 
backstab the enemy. And attack. Perfect, 30% effectiveness. Very good. Flanking works. And now that we have some helmets, that should reduce our casualties. But we are only going against brigands, so it's not like they are a, a, a formidable foe. In fact, we have lost only one troop. You better run. And we are done, we can disband. Get back to work. Now, defeating the enemy will give us something called influence. We can spend this influence to settle into different areas. We need 1000 to claim an area. I think it would make sense to settle into a place that will allow us to farm a bit more effectively. So, let's see. Flax. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we can settle here, or mm, let's see, this one has 72 iron, this one has, yeah, we are going to settle in the middle. This one has double the amount of iron, so that is going to be our deciding factor. So what we can do is go into the map view, click on this area and claim with influence. Yes, please. We are claiming world brand. It will take a bit of time. I suppose this is necessary. So if we have other lords in the area, they can also press a claim if we are doing so. Well, anyway, I think this is pretty much where we are going to leave this particular video. Um, the thing is, this game is not quite done yet, I think. Uh, the amount of content is pretty good at the moment, but there are signs that it will be a lot better later on. So, I think we are going to leave this here for now, and we will definitely going to revisit this one once it is a bit more expanded in terms of features. Because once we have enemy lords in the area and we have more buildings in town, then it will be a lot more interesting. It is already quite a good city building game, I think. I mean, look at this. This is gorgeous. And an economical model is already quite a good one, I think. So yeah, I think we are going to leave this first look video right here. And we will definitely revisit this one once it is more updated. Anyways, I will leave you with some beautiful shots of the game and then I will see you in the next video. So, thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can leave a like, leave a comment and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want. If you would like to support me a little bit more, you can do so by clicking on the join button and becoming a channel member, which will give you early access to most of my videos a week early. Well, thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one, thank you and goodbye. Come on.